Hello and welcome to From the Roots Up where we're building our homestead little by little from the roots up. I'm Christy and today we are going to be making home canned spaghetti sauce. It is day 31 in our Every Bit Counts Challenge and if you have been following along with us, we have preserved something every single day in the month of August. It has been a lot of work, but I want you to stick around for the end of this video because at the end of this video, we are gonna pull out absolutely everything we've preserved all month and you're gonna see how much just doing a teeny tiny bit every day, even one jar of something or one little bag of something really has added up. We have an insane amount of <laughs> preserved food this month. And I am so thankful to Three Rivers Homestead for putting on this challenge. Today, we are gonna be taking these tomatoes and we are gonna be making pasta sauce. A week or two ago, we did a recipe canning tomatoes the really super easy, lazy person's way, where you just chop them up and you stick them in the jar. And if you want that, I will, go, I will post that link in the comments below so you can see the absolute easiest non-labor intensive way to can tomatoes. This one takes a little more effort because when you can a sauce, you want it to taste best and you want it to have a nice smooth texture. And so the thing that we're going to do that takes a little bit of time is to remove the skins from the tomatoes. Now I will tell you, I haven't tried this, but I have heard that people have had luck by taking tomatoes, putting them in a bag and just sticking them in the freezer. And I've heard that the skins just kind of slide off. I do need to try that sometime. But today we're gonna do it using boiling water and an ice bath. And we're going to take the tomatoes, dip them in boiling water for about 30 seconds, and then immediately plunge them down into an ice bath and the skin should just peel right off. So that is the first thing we're going to do. We're gonna peel these tomatoes, we're gonna to chop them up and quarter them, and we're gonna put them in our big stock pot. So let's get going. All right, I've got a boiling pot of water right here. I'm gonna take my tomatoes one at a time with a slotted spoon. I'm gonna dip them down in for 30 seconds. And now I'm gonna pick them up and plunge it straight into the ice water bath. and the skin peels right away, just like that. I'm gonna save my skins because um, I'm gonna feed them to the critters, the chickens, but there you have it. All right, let's keep going. And I'm gonna put several tomatoes at a time in here. That just makes it easier because I, can, I know I can be fairly quick removing them. Now throughout this process, you may have to refresh your ice bath and make sure you put fresh ice in it and keep it really cold. It's that transfer from super hot to super cold that causes the tomatoes to shrink and the skins can pull off of them real fast. So that's, we wanna make sure we keep that contrast and, and your ice bath water does not get warm. Now, sometimes with these tomatoes, when you're peeling them, you'll just have to make a little dent in them with your fingernail, or if you wanna just get a knife, you can make that first initial, um, that first initial tear in the skin, and then it just pulls right off. But, eh, it works well enough with my fingernail. I don't need a knife. Okay, we're not quite done peeling all the tomatoes, but I'm gonna get overrun with peeled tomatoes before I can get them in the pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start peeling these tomatoes. I'm just gonna take this nifty little tomato corer and get the stem portion out. This is amazing, I love this thing. And then I don't have to be really precise, I'm just gonna quarter the tomato and put it in the stock pot. And lather, rinse, repeat. This would be a lot easier if you had an assembly line of people, which really makes me think next time I need to convince the girls to come help me. <laughs> Actually, why am I not having them help? Hey, Taylor and Michaela, you wanna help? Um, Michaela, you're gonna core the tomatoes, so take this little thing and dip it in. Uh, I'm gonna take my trash bowl, use that as a trash bowl. And Taylor, when she's done coring them, you slice them 
twice, once long ways and once sideways and put them in that. We will get done with this a lot faster. Let's go. Thank you so much, girls. That really cut my time down a ton. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Now, wash hands and y'all can go take these to the chickens, okay? All right, now we have tomatoes in a huge mungus pot and we are gonna cut up some other ingredients to go. First, I'm gonna get about four bell peppers. Pasta sauce really is to your liking. If you like it more or less peppery, go for it. But I'm gonna do about four big ones. By the way, this is about 25 pounds of tomatoes. I will put this exact recipe in the description so you can follow along if you want to. Or if you're more of a wing in it sort of person, that is fine too. All right, now we're gonna put about four onions in this. And I'm gonna chop them up the same way. Woo, all right, four onions and many tears later, but they're in there. <laughs> now, we are gonna do eight cloves of garlic. And the clove is a little piece of garlic. Now with garlic, you wanna remove the skin. You also wanna crush it before you chop it up. Crushing it releases the juices that make it super beneficial and super flavorful. Okay, all the skins are removed from the garlic. Now I'm just gonna take them and I'm gonna take the side of my knife and I'm gonna crush them and then I can chop them up and put them into my pasta sauce. All right, I want about 12 ounces of tomato paste. This will help the tomato sauce get a little thicker As you can see, my stock pot is getting quite full. That's okay, it means we'll make a many quarts of tomato sauce. Okay, then we want two thirds of a cup of sugar, a quarter of a cup of salt, a quarter of a cup of oil, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, two bay leaves. Now don't crunch these up because we'll remove them at the end. And I went and got some oregano, parsley, and basil out of my garden, and I'm just gonna put those in there. I wanna crush the leaves up a little bit as I'm putting them in so that they can release their flavor. If you're using dried oregano, parsley, or basil, about two teaspoons each will do it, depending on the flavor that you like. The stronger flavor, the more you put in there. Then I wanna put a little bit of crushed red pepper. We actually made this crushed red pepper earlier in our Everybody Counts Challenge by dehydrating red peppers. And you can find that on our Every Bit Counts Challenge playlist. I'm gonna stir this up, and then I'm gonna cover it with water. That's all there is to the pasta mix. Now, we're going to take it over to the stove and we're going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna reduce the heat to medium or medium to low, and we're going to simmer it for about four to five hours. Now, this can give a little bit, depending on how thick, how saucy you like your sauce, you can decide where in there. But once that is ready to go, I'll pull it off and I'll see you back here. All right, this is simmered on the stove for about five hours and we are down to some delicious pasta sauce. Now, if you see the bay leaves, go ahead and remove the bay leaves. They don't need to get jarred. Um, but we're just going to fill each of these jars. These are quarts. This recipe makes about nine quarts, give or take, depending on the size of the tomatoes and things. So I have nine quart jars that I've heated up because since this is hot, we don't want it to go into a cold jar. And then I have the canner and the canner's got warm water in it. Again, you wanna make sure that the, the temperature is consistent and that reduces the risk of the jars cracking. First, the first thing we're gonna put in the jars is two tablespoons of lemon juice, and that's for a quart jar. If you're canning in a pint jar, just cut that in half. Two tablespoons of lemon juice, that's gonna help it be shelf stable. And then we're gonna pour in our sauce. 
We want to leave half an inch of head space. The head space is the distance between the top of the jar and the top of the canning liquid. So in this case, the pasta sauce. So there needs to be half an inch there. We're going to take something. I'm using a knife, but I'm also careful not to pound it on the bottom of the jar. But they make little canning things that are rubber that you just push around and get the air bubbles out. Then you may have to add just a little bit of sauce after that. Once that's done, you wanna take a wet rag and just wipe off the rim of the jar because you don't want anything coming between the top of the jar and the lid that could cause it to not seal. So we want to put the lid down. You want to take the ring and twist it to where it's finger tight and just a little bit more. Don't wrench down or that can cause it to not seal. And that is ready to put in the canner. So we're going to go ahead and stick it in here. Now in our canner, we've got some water and the water needs to be one to two inches above the jars. So if you have to add some at the end, that's totally fine. I'm gonna actually put some vinegar in our canner because we have really hard water. The vinegar is going to help it to not leave that white calcification on the jars when you pull them out. It's not harmful to the jars, but it looks better. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and fill as many of these jars as we can with our pasta sauce. Okay, we had enough pasta for nine quarts and one pint. Now the next step is going to be to process them in the water bath canner. This recipe calls for 40 minutes processing time in the water bath canner. We're gonna take our water bath canner, and remember it needs about one to two inches of water above these jars. We're gonna take it over to the stove. We're gonna turn the stove on high heat and bring this water bath canner to a boil. And then once it reaches the boil, that starts our processing time. We're gonna set the timer for 40 minutes. Once 40 minutes is over, we'll turn the stove completely off, take the lid off of the water bath canner, and let it set for at least five minutes before we pull the jars out. I'll see you back here when we pull them out. Okay, these have gone through the canning process. They've boiled for 40 minutes. They've sat for five, and now we're gonna take them out of the canner. All right, now these are ready to be stored away on the shelf and we are gonna be able to make some delicious pasta this year. We have finally reached the end of our Every Bit Counts Challenge month and this is the result. We are going to have a cram full pantry with all of these things from freeze drying to canning to freezing to dehydrating. We have done it all this month. And if you missed any of our videos, we have a playlist for all of our projects right over here that you can see. But just because our Every Bit Counts Challenge is coming to an end, don't worry, we are still going to be putting out content. We'll be putting out preserving content and some cooking content, some gardening content, some animal content. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and you can be notified when we put out new videos. Thank you so much for joining us this month and a special thank you to Three Rivers Homestead for starting this challenge. I am so thankful for the inspiration and the motivation to get off of my tail and to really do something with my hands and it really has paid off dividends. Thank you so much for joining us.